Hello everyone, Nick here, and today we are going to do another houseplant tour. It has been a while since I've done a houseplant tour here on YouTube, and I am admittedly a little bit worried because I have so many more plants since the last time I did a houseplant tour. I think last time I had around 150, well this time I have around 225, and I'd really like to show you as much of everything as I can. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Before we get started, I just want to say that I know sometimes I sound like gibberish when I'm speaking the plant Latin, so I'll do my best to say the common names, but there are just far too many plants in this video for me to make a whole list. So if you're wondering what a plant specifically is called, just leave the time that appears in the comment and I'll let you know what it's called. So we're here in my kitchen in the south facing window, and right here is a string of pearls that is growing really well. There's also a few calanchoes in this pot, but I'll get to them later. Next to it is a Senecio peregrinus, or a string of dolphins, a really wonderful plant. It really looks like dolphins jumping out of the water, and it grows really easily as long as you give it enough light. And then next to that is a Calanchoe tomentosa. They also call this panda plant. It is such a wonderful succulent to grow. The leaves are so fuzzy. It is just so wonderful and such a nice difference to those other plants that are a little too pokey. Back here is a fairy castle cactus, and then a Haworthia. I think this is Haworthia zebrina, I'm not too sure. And then I have a little Calanchoe garden right here. So this one they commonly call Mother of Thousands, while the one down here they commonly call Mother of Millions, but I've also heard it as Chandelier Plant. And then I'm not too sure about this little green one down here, but it is definitely a Calanchoe. And then here is a cactus. I think this is called the red-headed Irish woman. Someone had ID'd it for me before, but I don't know the genus or species. And then right here is a Peperomia graviolens. Such a wonderful Peperomia. It can really take a lot of light, and the red undersides is beautiful, and a nice contrast to the green on top. And then a few cacti that I've been growing from seeds, as well as a few calanchoes that I've grown from the little tips that you had saw on the mother of thousands right here. And then last but not least in this windowsill is a Senecio stapeliiformis, or a pickle plant is what they call it. The sun is gonna be playing devil's advocate in this video, so just bear with me. I have a few plants up here, they definitely all need water. This is a Adramiscus cristatus. And then a few more plants I've been growing from cuttings. So a Calanchoe tomentosa, a Crassula ovata that desperately desperately needs water, and then a few more cacti that I'm growing from cuttings. Directly next to that south-facing window, I have this Peperomia argyria, or watermelon Peperomia. Its older leaves are getting a little faded, it might be getting a little too much light, but it's been growing very well nonetheless. And then a Tradescantia silamontana. I think they also call this fuzzy inch plant or fuzzy wandering Jew, but I don't see it very often, but I really like it for its little purple stems that it gets. And I also love fuzzy plants, who doesn't? And then back there is just a Phalaenopsis orchid. I just watered it, but it's a little wrinkled right now. And then a Golden Pothos, or a Pipernum aureum. This is actually my roommate's pothos, but between you and me, I take care of it. And then down here, this is a Peperomia cluciifolia red margin. And then an aloe vera that I've grown from babies. And then this is actually really interesting right here. I apologize for the car sounds. I live on the second floor in Philadelphia. Uh, but this is a Monstera Deliciosa that is variegated. So I did not purchase this like this. I work at a plant shop here in Philadelphia, as most of you know, and we got in a batch of Monsteras, and I noticed that one of the leaves looked like this. And I knew that's not normal. I looked at the other leaf on the plant, and... It was completely uh, green, but if I flipped it over on the back, there was a little bit of variegation, so I decided to remove the plant from the rest of them and just monitor the progress. And then the next leaf it put out looked like this, and the next leaf it put out looked like this. So I don't know what kind of variegated monstera this is. A lot of people tell me it's like the Marmorata or Aria or something like that, but the difference between that one and this one is that one has yellow tinges, while this one is only like a lighter green version. So I really have no idea what kind of variegated monstera this is, which is very interesting and makes it a little bit more, you know, fun for me to grow. 
I'm kind of expecting the next leaf to get splits from the way it has been growing and it gets really good light in front of the south facing window. But yeah, a really, really cool plant that I have in my possession. And last but not least here in my kitchen, I have my Chinese evergreen or Aglianema commutatum silver bay. Also a snake plant that my cat throws on the floor like once a week, so it's very beat up. And then my ZZ plant, my Zamiacolcus zamiafolia. This is such an amazing plant. I water this plant once every two or three months, and I think that is the best way to care for this plant. Benign neglect. And if you can see, I also have some monstera leaves, but these are just cut leaves that I have growing in water. So they won't actually grow into a plant. They're just going to be leaves for the rest of their life. Moving on to the living room, I have here a variegated cast iron plant, or Aspidistra aladier variegata. And then a Schifflera amate. It's a larger umbrella plant. Really awesome plant. I adore the purple tinge. I really like purple, so, and I love green. So any plants that are purple and green, as you saw earlier with the Tritoscantia silamontana, they really jump up to the top of my list. And then over in the window, this is a Thematophyllum bipinatophytum. You'll probably see this labeled as a Philodendron celloum or Philodendron hope. Uh, that's not really incorrect because of the way it's been sold over the years, but the correct name is Thematophyllum bipinatophytum. And then down here I have some aloe vera that I've been growing from babies. You get one aloe and then years later you have tens to twenty of them. So I love just taking them out of the mother plant's pot and just potting them up and making little gardens like this. And then right here, this is a rather cool plant. This is Senecio macroglossus. So they call this wax ivy. Once again, I apologize for all the sun that's going to be in this video, but you know my plants love it. Uh, so this is variegated wax ivy. It's a really not the easiest growing plant that I've had. Sorry for the cars once again, but... It's been really fun to watch grow. Senecios and many other succulents actually grow in the wintertime, so they don't really do much in the summertime. So it's actually kind of nice to have some plants that you can watch grow in the winter, and then the other plants you can watch grow in the summertime. Next to that is a Peperomia quadrangularis, one of my favorite Peperomias. And then the Peperomia tetragona. You'll probably see this plant sold as a Peperomia pudiolata, but the correct name is Peperomia tetragona. A really awesome plant. I have a few of these. And then a Christmas cactus. It's actually probably not a Christmas cactus, but that's how it was sold to me as, so that's just what I refer to it as. And then some more aloe vera with my window string tied into it. This is the original aloe vera I got from my friend years ago, and it has grown so much and puts off so many babies for me, so I always have plant gifts for new plant people whenever they come by. And then a philodendron imperial red that is totally going to be blown out by the sunlight, I apologize. But it's beautiful the way that the new leaves come in very red, and then they fade back to green over time. And then a Monstera deliciosa that is putting off a new leaf for me, actually, that's going to have a bunch of splits, so I'm really excited to see how this looks. This is when I've grown from a cutting. This is the cutting I grew uh, from my How to Propagate Monstera Deliciosa video. So, once again, apologize for all the sunlight, but here's kind of a more better look of the window as a whole. And I actually do have a plant up in the window right up here. This is a, I'm gonna pull this down, a Tradescantia Spathaceae variegata. A really awesome plant. I've been finally seeing this sold a lot more recently. And then I also have some type of epiphyllum or orchid cactus hanging up here. This is one I got from my friend's mom. Really awesome plant. So when you don't have any room in your kitchen for the microwave and it has to awkwardly go in your living room, you deck it out with plants. So the first one we have here is a Hoya carnosa that once again, I'm sorry for the light, but this is a Hoya carnosa tricolor, one of the more common Hoyas you're gonna see when you find a Hoya at a plant shop. And then right here is a Peperomia rana verde, rather new Peperomia on the market. I really like it. It kind of looks like a combination of the Ripple Peperomia and the Peperomia, uh, or I'm sorry, Pilea Peperomioides. And then a Peperomia polybotria. Really fun plant. Mine's been getting kind of like weird spots. I don't really know what the deal is. It's been growing fine, but I don't know. <laughs> I have another one that's been growing a little bit better in a brighter window, so maybe it needs a little bit more light. 
This isn't ugly anymore wishes, but I think it is on its way out. It is looking very chlorotic. And then a Sansevieria cylindrica, some type of this plant. I'm not sure what this exact variety is. And then a Maranta Lucanura Kirchoviana, which just means it's a, a green pear plant. I water this plant with tap water, and you can see exactly what happens to these plants if you do that over time. They get these brown tips. Otherwise, the plant's totally fine. I actually find the green pear, pear plants to be much more easygoing than the red prayer plants. I don't have any of those because I just really cannot get them to grow well. However, this green one grows well for me, but I am kind of neglectful in the fact, like I said, that I use tap water. So this is what happens six months to a year later. Then hiding in here in my little hydroponic jar, I have this Dracaena Janet Craig and then a Sansevieria trifasciata moonshine back here. And then this is my very, very prolific Monstera adansoniae totem that I made back in my how to stake your Monstera adansoniae video. And I've taken so many cuttings of this to give to friends and it is just non-stop growing for me. You can see right here is where I took a recent cutting and it's already growing. But I, I love this plant. And hanging on the wall over here is a Hoya carnosa. Another type of Hoya that's pretty easily found on the market. And then down here on the floor is a, another Sansevieria. This one's Sansevieria trifasciata and it's called Black Coral. And then this is my circle shelf that I found at Marshall's, believe it or not. And in it is a Hoya bilobata. I think this is called Hoya DS70. Really easy Hoya. And then some type of Ripsalis that I'm growing. And then up here is, on the right is a baby ZZ plant that is like four years old, believe it or not. And then on the left in the funky blue pot is a Sansevieria Samurai. And then here's another Sansevieria on the right, Sansevieria Hanii, or I think they call it a bird's nest Sansevieria. This is a funky little variety that has some white stripes. And then a Cebu Blue Pothos, or Epipernum Pinatum, in the little jar, just rooting. Down here on the table is a Peperomia Frost, a rather new Peperomia on the market as well. And then my big peace lily. So this is Spathophyllum Sensation. I don't have any luck with these smaller peace lilies that are a little bit more shinier, but I find that this peace lily is so much easier and really just takes the cake when it comes to peace lilies. The only difference is this one doesn't flower as easily, but it does in fact flower. And then up here in my gold ring is a Cebu Blue Pothos, another one. And back to another windowsill. So this isn't a west facing windowsill. A Monstera adansoniae that I'm trying to root, and then a Sansevieria, I think this is a Sansevieria trifasciata, but they call it Bantel Sensation. Uh, I've gotten a few questions about this plant. I definitely recommend growing this one in a window because it has the white, it doesn't have any chlorophyll in there, so it really does require some more light, while your other Sansevierias can be pulled back, like that black coral that I have on the center of the floor, uh, versus this one really does have to go in the window. Same with this Sansevieria cylindrica bonkel, or starfish Sansevieria. If you want to retain the thick stalks of leaves that it has, you definitely would love to give this one a lot of light to retain that. This one is growing some babies for me. And another look at that Sansevieria honeyi that gets that little white stripe. Sorry, my pile is in the way. I think it's a little tiny white stripe. And another type of Sansevieria right here. I think someone told me this is called like a flame, yellow flame, green flame, or something along that line. I need to give it some water. Sorry, it's really hard to see. And then this is a Sanchezia. I think it's Sanchezia nobilis. And then my Pilea peperomioides. This is my original Pilea peperomioides that I've had for quite some time. And there's a little baby that I just noticed a few weeks ago. And then my Phalaenopsis orchid I've had for a few years that I took from the bar I used to work at because they would just throw them out. Uh, so this one is blooming for me. It seems to bloom for me around every February in the winter time. Really beautiful blooms. You can see not all of them have even bloomed yet, but I just 
really like this plant. I don't really, I'm not an orchid collector by any means. I've actually never paid money for an orchid. I usually just acquire them and that's how it's gonna go for a little bit until they really spark my interest. But for now, the few that I have just really spark joy, if you will, when they bloom. So I don't like, you know, they don't really do much for me when they're not blooming like this one right here, which is a Bretonia orchid. Uh, it has some spent orchid stalks that I never even cut off, but this one bloomed twice for me at the same time over the summer. So I'm looking forward to this one blooming for me in the summertime while this one blooms for me in the wintertime. Hanging up in the window is a Tradescantia Spathaceae variegata, another one. You got a good look at the one I had before, so I think you understand what the plant looks like, but it's hard, kind of hard to see in this windowsill, as well as this Peperomia tetragona that is hanging quite a bit. These plants, they grow upright, and then once they get a little too long, they'll start to trail down. So I really like the look of them trailing, but I get some questions at the plant shop about theirs drooping, but I think this is just kind of what it does. So I think it looks great like that when it just goes all over the place. Sorry, it's very backlit, but I think you get the idea. And then right here is a, another type of epipernum. This is a pothos enjoy, I think they call it. So I think this is still the same species as like the golden pothos or the neon pothos, but it's got some really nice white variegation to it. A little bit more blocky variegation than the marble queen, which you'll see later. And then here's a muffin right here watching us do whatever we're doing. Muffin! Sweet pea! Hi! Oh, she's so cute. Well, this is my Monstera Deliciosa. It's like the smaller variety. It doesn't get that big. I've had it for quite some time. I've actually just cut it back quite a bit recently because uh, it's kind of leggy and lanky, as you can see, which I don't really mind the look of. I think it kind of gives it like a little bit of more character. Uh, but the top was getting very heavy because the stalks on top are getting a lot of light from this window right here, which is west-facing, so the stalks were getting much more thick and getting top-heavy, so I'm cutting those back, as you'll see later, and I'm trying to root them to make some more Monstera Deliciosa. If we're working our way around the room, here's the other window, which has a lot of ficus, as you can see. So this is ficus bengalensis audrey a rather new one on the market that really has been blowing up this year. And then uh, Pilea peperomioides right here. This is the baby one that I had grown in my uh, How to Propagate Peperomia, or I'm sorry, Pilea peperomioides video quite a long time ago. And then this is a Ficus elastica ruby. And then right next to that is a Ficus elastica taniki. So the only difference between these plants is that the ruby retains a little bit more red while the taniki kind of fades back to white very quickly. They're both really easy, as long as you give them enough light. Ficus need a lot of light. I think if you go on the internet and read about ficus, people are gonna say how difficult they are. Uh, between you guys and myself, I'm going to say that a lot of people give ficus not enough light and too much water, and that is just a death sentence for most plants, but ficus really, really need that light to sustain life. So you can see that's why my ficus Audrey here is looking so fabulous because it's directly in a west-facing window that does get a little bit shielded by the tree outside in the summertime. So when the plant is actively growing, it's not getting harsh direct light, but it is receiving some, you know, here and there as the, the tree blows around, it is getting some direct light. And then this is a Sansevieria, some type of Sansevieria trifasciata. And then some kind of epiphyllum. I think this is the, the Rick Rat Cactus. I don't know if it's the, the true epiphyllum and anguiller. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's some type of epiphyllum. Sorry, it's very bright in this window. And then the last plant in this windowsill is the Ficus Altissima, which is another rather new ficus on the market. So you can see in this window, I have four different types of ficus. The Ficus Altissima, the Taniki, the Ruby, and the Audrey. And then the last plant in this window, oh, actually there's two more. So there's a Scindapsis silvery ann that grows all around my window. I really like doing this with Scindapsis. They just really take well to <laughs> growing around windows. So I have another one later on that you'll see, but I love to just hang my Scindapsis right next to the window and then just let them go all over the place. And then this is a Tradescantia fluminensis tricolor that's definitely gonna get blown out from the sun, I'm sorry but a really, really beautiful, very delicate plant. Not the easiest one to grow. Directly to the right of that west-facing window is this Philodendron Jungle Boogie. 
and this one's growing up a totem and it's really growing really well. It gets these little spots on it. I think that might be sun damage or it might be cold damage. I really don't know. But other than that, the plant seems to be really healthy, but those spots have shown up on the newest leaf right here. So the plant is growing very well other than that, so I'm kind of just leaving it be, but maybe I'll experiment with another plant in this windowsill in the future. And then right here is a type of Sissus. So this is Sissus, uh, ad I think it's Adenopoda. It's very red on the back. It's beautiful, and it's very, very fuzzy. So a really, really cool plant. I've been really liking Sissus lately. Such a like lush, dreamy plant, very woodlandy. I've been really liking any plants that they kind of seem like you could almost walk outside here in Philadelphia and like pull it out of the ground and put it in a pot. That's like my favorite kind of plant. So <laughs> you'll see more of those in the future. And then down here is an Alocasia Amazonica. I don't really grow Alocasia. They're really difficult, uh, in my opinion that is. But I saw this one at the plant shop, and they were inexpensive and beautiful, so I decided to give it a go, but I'm already getting some yellow tips. I let it dry out quite a bit. It's right next to this west-facing window, but I think it needs a little bit more humidity than I give it in the main room here. Then over here, this is a ZZ plant. This is a, this is a micro ZZ plant, so it's mini compared to the other ZZ plant you saw earlier, so it's a smaller variety that has recently shown up on the market. Uh, the cool thing about this one, though, is it has a variegated stalk. I don't know if this, there's a little baby nub down here that you can probably not even see, but that's going to be a new stalk of this plant. I don't know if it's going to retain its variegation because the plant right here, which is the, the other baby plant that, you know, came before this one right here, doesn't have any variegation, so unlike the Monstera that had the variegation since it started as a baby, I don't know if this will retain this beautiful modeling. And then right here is the Calathea lancifolia. I grow most of my Calatheas in my bedroom because I keep it very humid and I keep a lot of air movement, but I just really like this Calathea here, so probably really not doing it any favors at all, but this is where I have it. And then I don't even want to show you guys the shelf because the shelf is going away soon. But um, I have my resurrection plant that is completely folded up, which is fine. And then it's kind of just where I leave my plants that I need to mess with. But I'm brave enough to show you guys. So here's just a little ZZ plant baby that I've been growing from a cutting. And then a terrarium that needs a lot of work. Uh, there's a Peperomia orba and a Peperomia tetragona. And then another terrarium that needs a lot of work right here. The only plant alive really is that Pelionia pulchra in the back and the Pilea over here. Uh, is hanging on and then up top I have the um, jade pothos that needs some more attention but they're like I'm saying this area I have some plans for it so don't really pay attention to it and then my Sansevieria that I've had for quite a long time my Sansevieria I think it's the Zelenica but it's Sansevieria trifasciata on my coffee table I have this Primalina which is also called an Asian violet very similar to African violets and it's actually in a pot by Mr. Plant Dad. So if you don't already follow him on Instagram, you definitely should. He makes wonderful pots and posts wonderful plant pictures. And then next to Muffin here, who's settling down on the couch. Hi, sweetie. Oh, I love her so much. Oh my God, how cute is she? I'm sorry, I know she's not a plant, but let's just take a moment to enjoy Muffin for what she is. Uh, so this is a needle mahogany. Sorry, this sounds on the floor. It's not gonna do us any favors. Let's get around here. Uh, so this is called a natal mahogany. Really, really awesome plant. This plant blew me away at TPIE. What I've learned about this plant is it's extremely easy and it can take pretty much any light condition. Obviously, no light is not an option, but it can handle very, very low light conditions. Um, and it likes just to be watered. Like, it likes to stay moist. So I've been really pushing this plant in the, the shop that I work at because it's like I said earlier about the ficus, people love to give their plants not enough light and too much water. So the perfect remedy for that is to, you know, give people the plant that's perfect for that. People want to take care of their plants. They want to water them. You know what I mean? So this is the perfect plant for that. Uh, it's a tree. It is like, you know, it's a mahogany plant. So it, it is a tree. So you can see there's kind of like a few trunks in the pot and they grow up. Uh, you won't really find this as a small plant. You'll probably only find this in the 10-inch pot or larger. 
but if you find it, I highly recommend trying it out. I've only had mine for a month now, but I'm in love with it. And my, <laughs> I can't shut up about it. Every time I walk by it, I'm just like, oh my God, I love it. Ask my roommate. And then over here, uh, this is a Sansevieria trifasciata Laurentii, I believe. It's another kind of snake plant. And then a Skindapsis pictus exotica, which is just a larger leaf version of the Skindapsis that we saw growing around the window earlier. And we'll see another one of those in a moment. Uh, but this is right back here, my Philodendron pink princess, a very, very popular plant right now on the market. Really hard to find too, unfortunately. Probably won't be that way for long though. Anything, if we learn anything from the trend of the Pilea peperomioides is patience and the plant will be pretty cheap one day. And then my Raphidophora tetrasperma, which is just taking over. You can kind of see it climbing up the wall right here. And I've actually cut it back quite a bit. You can see it regrowing right here. And then it grows all the way up the wall over here, up to my modern sprout grow bar, which I did a video on this winter. And I had to cut it back. And as you can see, it is, sorry, it's just starting to regrow again. And so I have quite a few Raphidophora cuttings that I've been propagating myself, as well as this Philodendron Red Emerald, which is a really cool Philodendron I've just been seeing a lot of recently. It's Philodendron erubescens, which believe it or not is the same species as the Philodendron Pink Princess I showed earlier. So it's fun that these plants are so closely related. But this one grows up a totem, and I absolutely love it. Some of it's kind of detached from the totem and just working its way up to the light. But from my understanding, these wood totems really don't do that much in your home. Uh, what you really would want to do is kind of turn it into a moss pole. But they really need a lot of moisture for them to stay attached to the wood. But for the look, I kind of like it, so I just keep it. And then down here, this is another type of cissus. So this is cissus rhombofolia, I believe. Um, grape leaf ivy is what they call it. A really wonderful plant. Another one of those plants, like the other cissus I showed you earlier, that just kind of looks very native looking and that you could kind of just pull it out of the ground. So you can see it's growing some new leaves right here. And then down here is another Epipernum pinnatum, Cebu blue. You can see kind of how blue it gets, but I have one that you'll see later on that's even bluer. A Scindapsis pictus. This is the smaller variety. You can see where our cat took a bite out of it. I'm aware that this plant is not good for pets, but it's not going to send them to the vet, so it's okay to keep right here. And then a Syngonium, uh, this is a Syngonium podophyllum variegatum, I believe, or albo variegatum, I think it is. So it's just a variegated Syngonium. Up top, I have a Dracaena marginata, just a standard dragon tree, and then some philodendron over here, philodendron micans, which is the velvet leaf philodendron that I'm just kind of rooting a bunch of because it was getting kind of leggy, and then some heart leaf philodendron that's trailing all the way down from the top shelf, and then this is another type of cissus right here. I have no idea what type of cissus this is. It was sold to me as a giant grape leaf ivy, but it's just very soft and fuzzy and it has a lot of roots. So I'm really excited to see where this one little cutting goes. Up top, it's kind of high up, but it's my Dracaena circulosa. I've had this plant forever. A really, really wonderful plant. There's another type of Sansevieria up there. I'm not too sure on the variety, but then also last but not least in the living room is this golden pothos, just a Pipernum aureum golden pothos. So I just finished filming the living room and it's taken so much longer than I thought it was going to. Uh, so I decided that this is going to be part one of the video and then we're gonna do part two of the houseplant tour which is going to be the bathroom and my bedroom. And there is a lot of cool plants. In fact, I think I keep most of my amazing cool plants in my bedroom, so do stay tuned. I'm gonna take a little break, eat some lunch because my tummy is rumbling and then we'll get right back at it with part two. So I'll see you then.